one watch. Fatberg, uh, fucking bear with me. I am fighting off one of the worst colds. At least I think it's a cold that I've had in my life. At this rate, this might be the last Fatberg video <laughs> if this shit continues at the rate it is going. So, you know, if I sound like shit and look like shit, it's just, it's that. that. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm fucked up right now. Today, I got a video that I've wanted to do for quite some time now because it has kind of um, flown under the radar in recent years. It made some waves back when it dropped, but uh, I don't think anybody really remembers it at this point. But today, we're going to be talking about Wolves Fall Out, which is a song released in 2013 by the fictional character Cheryl Murkowski. Cheryl was created by a podcaster named Richard Bluestein, who hosts a podcast called Yeast Radio. Yes, you heard that correctly. On this, he portrays another fictional character. I believe this is pronounced Madge Weinstein. I think that's how you pronounce that. Madge is a generally unpleasant creature, and on this podcast, many characters, fake, or portrayals of real people are invited as guests. Yeast Radio, although unheard of today, is actually a relatively ancient podcast, having started in 2004. And the character Madge had guest showings on radio programs and other shows within the podcast community, and to this day, it still airs, actually. Richard Bluestein is respected in his efforts to create the sort of internet surrealism that Tim and Eric popularized. Bluestein does mix some of his own beliefs and politics into his content, which led to the creation of Walls Fall Out. Now, one of those beliefs being Sylvia Brown, was a miserable fucking vulture who preyed on vulnerable people. But who is Sylvia Brown, and why should you care? Well, frankly, you shouldn't care because she's she's dead. <laughs> but let's explain who she was to make a little bit more sense of the song. Sylvia Celeste Brown was an American writer, psychic, and medium, which she lied about being till November 20th, 2013, when she died, and well, now she can actually talk to ghosts, so. Brown started acting as a medium and psychic in the 70s, which led to her creating a church that earned her an estimated $3 million dollars a year. Brown also hosted a live radio show where she would give out live readings and what have you. Brown preyed on desperate people and funneled money from them by giving them false hope from her predictions. This infamously led to a child potentially suffering further internment when Sylvia in 2002 told the parents of the missing boy, Sean Hornbeck, that he had been kidnapped by a dark-skinned Hispanic man, her words, not mine, and he was dead. And he could be found near He's there. near the boulders. Is he still with us? Do you see the bicycle anywhere? I think the... See, here's what's strange. I think the, the, the bicycle is in another state in a dump. Let me take a little break. We'll be back right after this. The family gave up searching for the boy, believing him to be dead. Sean was found years later in 2007 alive. And this happened again. <laughs> this very same thing happened a second time in 2004 with the missing girl, Amanda Barry. Sylvia told her mother that she was dead and had visions of her body in the water somewhere and had seen a jacket with DNA on it in the trash, indicating the perpetrator or some shit. Amanda's mother would sadly die two years later, believing her daughter to be dead and never receiving closure. Amanda, however, was found alive in 2013, 
she was one of Ariel Castro's victims. It's difficult to say for sure if they would have been found sooner if the parents continued the search, but Sylvia's lies certainly did not help. Sylvia's final lie would be proven when on Larry King Live, she predicted she would die at the age of 88 years old. She would then proceed to fuck that up too and die at 77. Brown would of course be investigated for fraud and criticized for her behavior over the years, but ultimately she would dodge any serious repercussions for her morally corrupt and criminal behavior. Now, this is what Wall's Fallout was created for, as a jab at the wretched creature in whatever way possible possible over the internet. Walls Fallout is based on a call Sylvia had with a listener in which they discussed struggling with rectal prolapse. Again, you're hearing that correctly? They would proceed to ask Sylvia for some kind of mystical help. I don't know what being a psychic or a medium can aid in, in, in that situation, but they, they were desperate, so they went to her and gave her their time and money I, I don't think she fixed the problem. <laughs> I will say, I, I imagine it went unresolved. Now, the song Walls Fall Out uh, is certainly a vile piece of media, but the, the video specifically is, well, a sight to behold. Featuring CGI animations of prolapses and real footage of individuals that one might consider disturbing, some used as a placeholder for Cheryl Murkowski's body, being she doesn't actually exist. The video has footage of a tanning addicted anorexic woman and old images of what I believe are dead Victorian children. Don't quote me on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's where those were sourced from. These are, these are ancient photos and they're not incredibly graphic. It also features a crude animation of Sylvia Brown getting something pulled out of her ass, and it's just all very disturbing. <laughs> the video actually had to be censored at one point in time to change the color of feces or otherwise be deplatformed and removed from the sites hosting it which as far as I can tell, it ended up being anyway as the years went by. You don't really see it on YouTube anymore. It's def like the original upload's gone. I think there's some re-uploads. It is, however, on Vimeo. It it's easy to find. Like the video's not lost media or some shit. <laughs> and as I said, the, the censored video can be easily found online. And uh, let's go against the grain here. I recommend watching this one. <laughs> it's NSFW. Uh, it's definitely a fucking a rough watch, but it raises some discussion. Important one at that. And I think that question and that discussion would be, what makes art good? Walls Fallout is a foul piece of media, but it's also extremely catchy and well-produced. It is as good as a song sang by someone who sounds like they've been smoking since they were eight can be. Or is it? Now, personally, I think the message was important. People should be aware that Sylvia Brown was a bastard, and the song was great. And the video was interesting. It was interesting. That's one thing you can't deny. <laughs> and it would ultimately prove Richard Bluestein to be a more effective psychic than Sylvia when at the end of the song, a message popped up predicting Sylvia's death as any day now. Sylvia would die. Soon after the video's release the same year, and I would like to hope she got to watch it somehow. Somehow before the end there. <laughs> I don't know if she would be able to make sense of it at 77, but fuck. It'd be good for a laugh, yeah? <laughs> Thanks for watching. I mean, uh, go check out uh, the dude's podcast. Uh, again, uh, it's East Radio, and I believe it is on Horror Hole, is like the, the blog or whatever it's called. Again, it's it's all very unpleasant, but the guy the guy means well. Like he's like a you know pro LGBT, and he, he stand he, he stands up for something with what content he produces, and it's just you know it's just awful and weird. <laughs> but that's some of the best shit out there. 
Yeah, and thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.